a photovoltaic series of water photovoltaic panels and this is the energy required to use on this building, 150 kilowatt hours per square meter per annum, compared to the typical office building, uh, which uses a 210. So it is a low energy building, but not that satisfactory. Uh, this is the uh, emission reduction. So now designing a low energy building then is part of technology that we do. Now let's say if you're in a temperate climate, you have a very cold winter and a very hot summer, and in between you have two very nice mid-season swing and auto. And so green design for me starts with passive mode. That means try to shape the building, try to orientate the building, try to do the facade of the building. And in this way, you, you can see the, the little dot, white dotted line We can improve comfort conditions a bit more uh, from the outset, but not that, not, that, not that much. What we should try and do is to start with using renewable energy sources so that we can we are not dependent on full mode systems as an existent in all existing as is, that is in all existing buildings. And so by producing your own energy, then, then you, you, uh, you reduce the dependency on, on fossil fuels and you, you head towards a larger situation. So this project we use photovoltaic and glass, which is, which is photovoltaic embedded in it, and we angled it so that one of these panels covered two floors. And the whole idea was the energy the building becomes uh, uh, building becomes a power station by itself, and so to, you know we need to produce at least 42 percent of the floor area in order to, to make the building energy uh, independent. And that's extremely cheap, difficult to achieve uh, with um, with most buildings. But if you look at the projected energy consumption in a building in this in this energy pie from the design to construction to operation to maintenance, alteration, disposal and discovery, uh, recovery, you find that 51% of energy is in the operational stage. So if you want to save energy, it is actually the operational stage. But what engineers do is that they try to give us consistent temperatures throughout the, the whole year, in winter and in summer. I don't think it's necessary. We don't, we, as human beings, don't mind being a little bit hot in the summer, a little bit colder in winter. And so through passive mode design, through shaping of the building, through orientation, through build configuration design design, as you can see at the top, and use of ambient energy, we can start to do with the larger building. So we become less dependent on renewable sources of energy. So this is a house we did in Kuala Lumpur, which is about 2.9 degrees above the equator. This is a path, actually not a house. This is the office building that we did. Um, one of the things we did in 1992. We used OTTV as an index. What happens to the course on the east side? What happens to the core in the middle? What happens to the core to the north? We found that the core on the east side actually has the lowest body TV value, and that's the energy situation for this building 123 kilo hours per square meter compared to 210. I mean, that's, you know, that means we still have a lot of room for improvement. It's not totally satisfactory, but it is actually you know, much lower than the existing office building. This is the water index. And this is the carbon CO2 emissions compared to the office building. So the elevator core is now no longer, you know, uh, in, uh, uh, in that building. But in this other building that you saw earlier on, you can see the elevator cores on the east and the west side. Then the idea I had is that what happens when we design buildings using the umbrella as a metaphor? And the umbrella is an incredible cybernetic device because, you know, it depends on the wind, you can shift, you can angle very quickly, instantaneously kill the wind or you keep out the rain. And so an automated umbrella building is something, an ideal for me. I haven't been able to achieve this yet, but it is still a, a thought. And this is really like a fairly jokey um, drawing uh, image of an umbrella building. And so one of the work we did, the projects we did in the late 80s was this house where we had an umbrella roof. Umbrella roof in this instance is a series of concrete panels or sun shades that let in the morning sun, keeps out the afternoon sun, and midday sun it keeps out the afternoon sun. So here it is, you can see the louvers over the uh, east facade, and there's the louvers on top, you can see it's an angle to keep out the sun. The building's not exactly on the north-south, but uh, we use the pool as a, as a rapid cooling device so that the wind that flows mostly from the east goes and enters the house you know, and, and, cools, and, and cools the living space of the houses. And then we use the, uh, the, the uh, staircase to bring the vent 
the air through the upper parts of the building. Uh, we start to develop ideas about use of what we call wing walls, where we deflect the wind into the insides of the house, and that's the central corridor. Uh, we shake the walls so that they are splayed, and so it 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 it, um, it combines the inside and the outside in a series of courtyards, and so um, so the building actually is a series of courtyards A, B, C, D, and E. And this energy index for the building, which is about 47 kilowatts per square meter, and these are different um, aspects. Um, oh yes, I've been told to shut up. I'll do that in a minute. Uh, so this, for this building, the atrium is naturally ventilated, and uh, and this is the uh, what we call the breathing wall, where the walls consist of series of angled glass, so it lets the air through, keeps out the wind. And this is a project we did in London. Uh, it's an extension of the Great Ormond Street Children's Hospital where we put a flu which sucks out the air during the mid-season so that the last three floors don't require any energy at all. And I'm not going to talk about this because it's basically a theory about green design. I don't have time for this. And that this is about recycling of materials and trying to close the loop as much as we can. And this is, if you like, a, theory, a model for green design, uh, which is in my books anyway. And so green design is by integration of these four aspects, the inputs, the outputs, internal areas and the outside. Now this is my last message to you. What happens if we get everything right? We've got technology right. The green, the grey and the blue. But what if we don't change? We continue with the high consumption production systems, our desires to have more and more things, and so everything that depends not on technology, green design is not, you know, the green future is not about design. It's about us as well, our lifestyles we have to change.